I remember looking at the loot train attack. I said, this is bigger than Bob. And David and Dan said, how can it be bigger than Bob? I said, it's bigger than Bob. It's definitely got a bit of that Western feel, but then you throw dragons in on top of that. And it makes it an incredibly complicated one to shoot. It's like a time travel movie where like, what if somebody had an F-16 that they brought to a medieval battle? There you have Daenerys Targaryen unleashed for the first time in Westeros, and she is going to show them what she can do. With every time that something goes wrong, more Targaryen comes out, more fire comes out. So she starts to take matters into her own hands. When you have a big battle sequence, especially one where you have multiple points of view. You have to figure out how you balance those and what is the sort of chief point of view that you want to lean on. And I chose to focus on Jamie, that it was about being on the other side of a dragon attack, trying to hold together his troops in the middle of watching the world change forever. It's just complete annihilation. And like he sees the horror of so many men just burned to ashes. There's nothing you can do, which is scary. She keeps losing battles and being weakened without ever striking back. And there's only so much of that Danny can take. There's only so much of that anyone would be able to take. We're now left with our heroes, and our heroes are on opposite ends of this chessboard. Tyrion has the most complex set of emotions about this battle of anyone, because he's got the woman he serves on one end, and he's got his brother, who he loves, on the other end. And it's a real struggle for him. Every piece of his being is wishing he can intercede, but he can't. And I'm seeing firsthand my family lose. She's the aggressor. And Jamie and Bronn, through their POV, we see that it ain't pretty conquering. And the hope is that the audience doesn't know who to root for in that sequence. Something like the loot train involves a lot of different departments, all working at sort of the very extremes of their abilities, I think. This was a difficult challenge because there are so many different looks and phases of the battle that come into play. There's a lot of continuity to make sure that we're in the right space, in the right part of the process, reflecting the right amount of burn. And then do it in between the cracks of everybody else doing their job. Because the entire sequence, is a wagon train and involves 27 wagons and there are various bits of dressing. We have to reshuffle the entire set constantly, which means dressing 180 degrees or 360 depending on the camera movement. So it means we have to be very particular when it comes to dressing our burnt elements, our unburnt elements, our partial burnt elements. There are so many stages to consider, but it's definitely a hell of a lot more fun when it gets into the bloody battle. We have a dye that we're using, which is a, an eco-friendly dye, which dyes things black to make it look very charred and burnt. And we're using several forms of ash as well to dress in and make it all look authentic, along with charcoal and stuff like that. Maybe when you're watching it, it doesn't necessarily stand out. And that means that we've done our job, because people just accept this is the world and that's the environment. We are the front line of defense, and detail is our job. So we're very happy about it. When I get to a sequence like the one we're doing right now, um, I take a deep breath and go, oh boy, that is going to be a lot of work. We had every toy you could possibly imagine in the making of it. We had four cameras most of the time. Sometimes we had up to seven or eight cameras. We've gone through three different tracking vehicles for different uh, purposes on this. We've got a, basically a souped up pickup truck with really good suspension for all our charges, Dothraki charges and what have you. We've got a, another electric vehicle called it a shadow tracker. And we've got a jib arm on that. And then finally, we've got basically a, a souped up dune buggy with a, a stabilized head on it that takes all the balance out and gives us a nice steady smooth shot to use over the particularly rough terrain. We needed to sell speed and we needed to shoot uh, elaborate dragon points of view. To do those kinds of shots we're relying on two different camera platforms. One is what's called spider cam. This is basically a camera rigged to a cable run between two construction cranes and they can move the camera very quickly from one end to the other and the camera can go about 70 miles per hour. We also used a company called Flycam, which is like a souped up drone. It's like a small helicopter. They were also able to go very fast and have a much more solid image to be able to work with than you would get from a traditional drone. So we can fly over things safely and 
and also have interactive effect on the ground and capture all those elements that will have a dragon either in front of the lens or above the lens. The battle is going to rely very heavily on visual effects at the end of the day. There's a lot of different beats to the attack. Sort of like cowboys and Indians and fire-breathing dragons all rolled up into one. There's Drogon breathing lots of fire, setting lots of things and people on fire. To give an idea, in uh, season six, which was our biggest season up to that point, we had 11 shots that featured Amelia riding the dragon. In the loot train, we have over 80. It's very new ground that we're trying to figure out this dragon who's, you know, 100 feet up in the air, who breathes fire of a column of 30 feet wide, that you're like, okay, how the hell are you going to do that? You've got Amelia on the back of a motion base that's animated to fly in concert with the animation on the dragon. So that the thing she's moving on is moving around as if she was really riding on Drogon, but in a stage in Belfast in front of green screen. So being on this theme park ride, which is kind of what it is, and you're strapped in, then looking like you are controlling it, when there's so much going on, you just got to harness every single bit of imagination you have and just use it. I mean, can you even imagine being on the back of a reptile that's breathing fire at your command? That's huge. One of the most complicated shots was this strafe run where the camera's over the back of Danny as she is blasting the shit out of this line of Lannisters and loot train carriages. We had to have spider cam fly a camera in real time and in perfect sync with 100 feet of ground explosions that are huge. Sam is our effects guru, and he's kind of a madman in the best possible way. And you know, one of his responsibilities is setting things on fire. Uh, which he's really good at. The strafe run was, uh, was 150 feet long and it had uh, 15 rows of charges. We tested it in Madrid back in August. We only tested a short section of it, minus the, the carts, because we were still making those. All the effect has to mimic as though the flame is coming from the sky. So we'll always size up the flame later in post. We'll shoot elements of flame against black. But Sam here has to make it feel that the impact of the flame is pushing along so it has a, a travel to it. I mean, we've been blowing things up on many days, but working out the timing of that uh, was uh, quite a process. In the end, we went with a fuel mix I and mean, explosives. to give almost like a, a machine gun sort of strafe, but closer together. And as each one exploded, it would then engulf the next and the next and the next, so you almost get a seamless line of flame just growing through. Because it was only one take, there was a lot that could go wrong. There was a lot of materials used and a lot of, you know, a lot of pyro used as well. So it's the excitement of when that button is pressed. It's the euphoria you feel afterwards. Knowing the hard work that's involved, it all comes to that point. That's the prize, that's the excitement, that's the reason. George Martin's often said that the Dothraki are kind of an amalgam of, of American Indian tribes and the Mongols, both peoples who were, you know, phenomenal on horseback and they were just much faster and so unorthodox in their battle approach that they could literally ride circles around their enemies. I think there was a line in the outline that said, uh, and it's now it's down to Camilla to do her tricks. I was like, thanks, D&D. &D. Uh, OK, where are we going to go now? Let's think of some ideas. What can we bring which has never been seen on screen before? She said, uh, you know, what about as the Dothraki are coming down, if they all just stood up on their horses and started shooting arrows at them? And I thought, well, that sounds great, but that's not possible. <laughs> she said, no, it is. We build these special stirrups and we can do it. So I sent a team out here with the horses and they, they started rehearsing the action and shooting a previs, which was then sent back to Northern Ireland. And then we could start putting that in front of people. You've got almost a metal shoe that you put your foot into. And then you have one foot on the side of the horse and the other foot on the top of the saddle. So we have these guys standing up and, you know, we're endeavoring to try and, you know, create something that not, somebody hasn't seen before. 
And it's extraordinary. It's like a wave rising up from a still ocean and all these guys perfectly coordinated rising up and I love it. And it shows us that the Dothraki are horse masters because we really haven't had that opportunity before. You know, so much of these battle scenes now has become visual effects that I hope people realize that much of this is actually being done. It's really, you know, stuntmen standing up on horses with bow and arrow shooting arrows and that's an impressive thing to see. There is something about a guy on a horse, standing on a horse, charging. There's something pretty impressive where you go, oh, that, you don't just do that. And we were kind of thinking to do something Mad Maxy. You know, when they come in, it's crazy. You don't, they're coming in different shapes. You don't know where they're coming from. And they're just these absolute madmen on horses. And that's what we try to recreate on screen for the loot train sequence. This battle was the most fire intensive one we've had. We burned more stuntmen than has ever been burned in, in a single shot and in a single sequence. The dragons have grown, you know, they're the size of a 747 now. So you'd think then that the amount of people they burn in one go would increase. We have potentially the most burns, full burns ever done on TV history, which is burning 20 men in one shot which we have coming up. And it was there was a few raised out eyebrows when I suggested 20. But it wasn't just because it's a record, although it is. It was because we just needed to see the scope of what was happening. So that was quite a challenge. The difficulty with 20 people is just that you ramp up the safety aspect of it because there's more people in harm's way, there's more that can go wrong. That was quite nerve-wracking for many reasons. Um, obviously, when you have that amount of people collected and they're all on fire, you get a lot of heat gathering in the center. So I was really concerned about the guys in the middle and I wanted to make sure that we get the guys on the outsides as far away from the guys on the inside as quickly as possible. We're using Tamar poppers. This basically like a camping cylinder, and we put it inside a metal cage so that the shrapnel won't hurt anybody, and we basically put a pyro charge on that, which explodes the gas popper, creates a 15-feet fireball, and we put one of those with each performer. It just means that when you light them, they really light. During this whole process where you're on fire, you do have to hold your breath. And that's that's our, our, the key point is to keep your heart rate down so you can hold your breath throughout the whole scene. And Riley's big on making it as calm as possible, you know. If someone's on fire, you know, it's quite a high adrenaline thing going on and saving your breath is very important. So you've got to be calm. You know, we are a show that doesn't sit on our laurels, so we do try and top ourselves each year, although we seem to make it more and more difficult for ourselves as we go on. There's just the fear fact that, of course, that when you see a man on fire, never mind 20, 20 guys in one go, it's, it's pretty, it's scary. <laughs> You know, when we start making these huge battles, it's so hard to imagine that we're ever gonna finish because there's so many moving pieces, but it's ultimately just, you know, one shot at a time and, and figuring it out from there. The cameras and the actors and stunts, and it was very much an all hands on deck sequence as much as we've ever had. And everybody did an excellent job of fitting all the puzzle pieces together. This is big cinema, and to get to work in all those genres all rolled into one fantastic world, that's the part I like. You never know what they're going to throw at you. You know, last year we completed Battle of the Bastards and it was like, oh yeah, how about this year? So it's good, they're always up the ante and I love that. It naturally gets bigger, this show, it just does. It's not, it's not me doing it, it's, they, they write it. It's a unique challenge in that you'll never really be able to do that kind of thing again. And you know, the next time I get to work on some other show, it'll be so boring, you know, where's the cable cam? Where's the, you know, five cameras and the 20 burning guys?